Okay, so today what I want to show you is um, a little bit more of working with models. Uh, basically an easier way to texture paint them. In the industry there is uh, one name that stands out above all else and that is uh, Adobe Substance Painter. Now they bought it off another company but it's basically the de facto standard for texturing and painting up your, your 3D models after the fact. And it's powerful enough to go like do full on Hollywood uh, type or down to low poly games. You can do whatever you want with it. But it makes it easy uh, to assign textures and paint them on kind of like you were in Photoshop per se. Now there are some other ones out there. Uh, Unreal has Quixel Mixer, Mixer as part of their Megascans project um, and that's accessible to you if you're in the Unreal Engine etc etc. Um, there's another one out there, a pretty expensive one. Uh, European company makes it. I think it's called. Um, oh, what the heck is it? Uh, I forget. Uh, anyway, but there's another one out there. A lot of people use it. It's an old school one. Um, it does a really, really, really good job. And then there's a free one, or if you buy it through itch.io pre binary assembled or whatever um, ready to go it's called armor 3d and it's I don't know like 20 bucks or something um, so anyway it's pretty cheap or you can download it and if you know how to uh, assemble binaries you can unzip it bring it into Visual Studio Code and uh, build it out so that's a pretty easy way to go for those of us that know how to do that uh, but if you don't just buy it from itch.io uh, there's a link right on armor 3d's page and you can get it so I'm just going to switch over here now to my screen capture and what you can see, pardon my dogs in the background, they're outside barking away at something. Um, this is an image and this is uh, a model that I made in Tinkercad and it doesn't have much for, um, it's got like 16 triangles, 48 vertices, um, it's, got, it's just got a base texture assigned to it, a flat color. But anyway, I took that into Blender, and then I I made that in Tinkercad. I think I have a picture here. Here we go. Uh, so basically, Tinkercad, you got basic geometric shapes, and all I did was I took a square, uh, which you can't see here, but there's, this is a, a whole cut square. Let me zoom this brush down so you can see my mouse a bit better here. Um, there's a whole cut square here. There was a hole over here, uh, a square object. It was just the same thing as this, but colored. Dropped that on a cube, extended it, grabbed this peak, slapped it on, extended it, merged the two, grouped the two, and then sent them out as, uh, exported them out as a uh, G, GLTF file. So from there, that was this file that we see here. And it's just a real basic block. So then from there what I did was I imported that into Blender. Uh, where are we here? Ch -ch -ch Blender. We'll just rotate that around. Um, so it's on edge. I exported it on the wrong coordinate when I exported it. Doesn't matter though. Um, but you can see here in Blender what I've done is I've added these loop cuts and I've subdivided it out and I've given it more of a surface because when you go to texture paint on it you want more triangles and things even that is probably not enough I probably should have done a bunch more loop cuts and stuff but I'm just doing a real basic test here so uh, so right there you can see that's got 384 vertices 128 triangles so we've basically got a lot more to work with than we did in that simple 16 uh, vertice or whatever it was, really low number. So then I brought that into blend, uh, from exported that into Blender after I assigned a base material to it. <coughs> and then I simply brought that into here into um, Armor 3D, Armor Paint. And so in Armor Paint, what you can do. Um, is you can actually bring in your textures, set them up. So I've got different textures here. and I'm going to add a new texture right now just to demonstrate it to you. And what I want to do here <coughs> is I think I'm going to set this up as a brick. Let me just look and see what I've got. 
in my downloads for textures that I've extracted. Rooftop wood, armor, 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 low poly building, caretaker shack, normal map. Uh, what have I got? Uh, I've got a metal. I guess I can go with a metal. Sure. All right. So I'll go. I'll set up a metal here. So what I do here is now is I go into file, import, texture, and then I'm going to go to my downloads folder where that exists, and I'm going to go into metal, and I am going to grab my color 1K, open. Then I'm going to go file, import, texture, and I'm in the same spot, and I'm going to go metallic 1K, open. Then we're going to go File, Import Texture, I need a Normal, OPGL 1K, File, Import Texture, and I want to get a Roughness Map. I don't know that I need ambient occlusion. I'm going to leave occlusion alone. Some images are under it, some don't, but I don't need it. <coughs> so now what I'm going to do is I have this selected. And I'm going to go, so that's the new material I made. I'm going to go texture. And I'm going to go here, image texture. And I'm going to click that right here. And then I'm going to go in this little pull down. And I am looking for metal. And I want my color 1K. Boom. Now I'm going to drag that up to here to my base color. Done. Let's get rid of this guy. Bring this up. Now I'm going to add another one. Texture. Image texture. Set that here. Now we're going to come down here and we are going to go uh, metallic. I'm going to drag that up to my metallic channel. Got it. Now I'm going to go and add another one here. Texture. Image texture. Come down here. And I'm going to assign my norm. My rough, shall do my roughness. Oops, move that out of the way here. Then I'm going to go texture. Image texture. And then this will be my normal map, uh, metallic. Slap that into normal. There we go. So now we're onto that brush. So now what I'm going to do is come over here to the model and I'm going to change my brush down and I want to change my radius down. <coughs> Now I'm smaller, I'm on that metal, and I'm just going to, so there's one thing up here that I found, is that this x-ray, you have to uncheck this x-ray, or else it paints all through the whole thing. So I'm going to just come here, and I'm just going to give this a little bit of a metal tin on the bottom here. I'm going to rotate it, give it a little more, not hugely keen on its rotation tools, I mean it works, but I've seen better. I think it's just a matter of getting used to it. go perfect so now what I've done is I just uh, I don't have the other side available to me here let's just try turning it there we go 
come across here. Perfect. Okay. Now I'm, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a new material. But this one, I'm just going to make it a color material. But what I want to do is just make it kind of a light, light blue. Perfect. Okay. And then I just want to come here and do a like a bay window sort of thing. I'm just going to go here. You know, if I had a window in the texture or a square box or whatever, I'd be painting those vertices. I'm just painting this for fun. Do another one on the side here. You get the idea. Another one down here. Little bathroom window. Rotate you all the way over. Another window here. And then I want to come over here. Hey, puppy dogs. Hey, puppy dog. My puppy dog just came in. And I just want to do this, paint another little square here, rotate it around, and there you have it. That's basically Armor Painter. So I know you can do a lot more with it, and the more vertices and the more uh, objects that you have separated out, you can isolate those and do a much better job painting. But you can see how quick it is to paint a 3D object this way. And from everything I've learned, Substance Painter is much better at this than, uh, than Armor Paint is. But Armor Paint will get the job done, and it's more or less free. So, uh, yeah. That's pretty much it. One little rough trailer painted without any know-how, because I just installed this like uh, 20 minutes ago. So... So just an idea of what you can do. And of course, I'm going to put a little bit of time and practice into this. And I want to be able to, uh, to use it. So have a good day, and I'll see you in the next one.